On a sweltering August day in 2013, physicist Timothy Kuth opened a package left in a parking lot by a friend. Inside, a cold, dense cube of dark metal. Taped to it was a cryptic note. Taken from Germany, from the nuclear reactor Hitler tried to build, gift of Nininger. What Tim held in his hands wasn't just a chunk of uranium, it was a ghost from one of the darkest chapters in history, a fragment of the Nazi nuclear program. And here's the kicker. Over 600 of these radioactive cubes are still missing. The story begins decades earlier, in December 1938. In a quiet Berlin laboratory, German chemists Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann made a discovery that would change the course of humanity. By bombarding uranium atoms with neutrons, they found something strange. The uranium split into lighter elements. Alarmed and confused, Hahn reached out to Lisa Meitner, his Jewish colleague who had narrowly escaped the Nazi regime. From exile in Sweden, Meitner and her nephew Otto Frisch interpreted the data. This was nuclear fission. The process unleashed an extraordinary amount of energy, confirming Einstein's theory that mass could convert directly into energy. Word spread fast. In early 1939, the implications hit American scientists hard. Nuclear fission wasn't just a breakthrough. It was the birth of a potential superweapon. That same year, Hungarian physicist Leo Szilard, and none other than Albert Einstein, penned a letter to U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt, warning that Nazi Germany might be developing a bomb of unimaginable power. Roosevelt listened, and the Manhattan Project was born. Back in Germany, their nuclear efforts took shape under the name Uranverein, the Uranium Club, led by quantum physics pioneer Werner Heisenberg. But while the U.S. pursued a bomb, Nazi scientists aimed to build a nuclear reactor. Their goal? To produce plutonium, a key ingredient for atomic weapons. To do that, they needed two things, uranium and heavy water to moderate the nuclear reaction. And that's where the cubes come in. German scientists cast 664 uranium cubes, each about two inches wide, weighing roughly five pounds. On their own, these cubes couldn't create an explosion, but they were the building blocks for a working reactor. The most advanced Nazi setup was in Heigerloch, Germany, hidden beneath a medieval church. There, Heisenberg's team arranged the uranium cubes into a spherical structure, submerged them in heavy water, and prayed for criticality. But it never came, thanks to Allied sabotage of Norway's heavy water plant and poor coordination inside Hitler's regime, the Nazi reactor failed. By 1945, the war was ending, and so was Germany's nuclear dream. But the Allies weren't taking any chances. As U.S. troops advanced across Europe, a top-secret task force called Operation Alsos raced to find Nazi nuclear sites before the Soviets, or anyone else, could. Led by Dutch-American physicist Samuel Goudsmit, Alsos was a mix of scientists, soldiers, and spies. They hunted labs, seized documents, and captured scientists. In April 1945, they hit the jackpot in Heigerloch. The uranium cubes, the failed reactor, and even Heisenberg himself were found and shipped off. The German scientists were detained under Operation Epsilon in England, where their bugged conversations confirmed a chilling truth. Nazi Germany had never been close to building a bomb, but fear of that possibility had already reshaped the world. After the war, the uranium cubes were brought to the U.S. Some went to national labs like Oak Ridge and Los Alamos. Others were used for research, or quietly disappeared. There was no master list, no official record. Some were gifted to scientists, some ended up in museums, others just vanished. Fast forward nearly 70 years. That's when Timothy Kuth received one, out of nowhere, in a parking lot. Kuth and colleague Miriam Hebert launched an investigation to verify the cube's origins. Using gamma spectroscopy and isotope testing, they confirmed the cube dated to around 1943 to 44 and matched the composition of those taken from Heigerloch. Since then, fewer than 20 have been positively identified. The rest, still unaccounted for. So here's the million dollar question. Do these cubes pose a danger? Technically, not really. They contain natural uranium, not enriched. That means it can't be used in a bomb without serious processing. We're talking industrial level enrichment, the kind only governments can pull off. But that's not the whole story. 
Even small amounts of radioactive material can be used in dirty bombs, devices meant not to destroy, but to terrorize. So, while the missing cubes aren't apocalyptic, they're not harmless souvenirs either. And beyond the threat lies a deeper issue, accountability. Every piece of nuclear material should be tracked, secured, and accounted for, not left to vanish into the fog of war. But maybe the true power of these cubes isn't radioactive, maybe it's symbolic. They represent a moment when the world stood at the edge of scientific power and moral collapse, when physicists became weapons engineers and fear pushed the boundaries of what was possible. The Nazis never succeeded in their nuclear ambitions, but the fear that they might push the Allies to finish what Germany started, resulting in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Koth and Hybert continue their work today, tracking down cubes, preserving them, and telling their stories. Not to glorify them, but to remind us what's at stake when science, secrecy, and ambition collide. So, the next time you hear about lost artifacts or forgotten relics from World War II, remember this. Sometimes, the most dangerous things in history aren't weapons, they're warnings. And if over 600 of these uranium cubes are still out there, scattered, hidden, maybe collecting dust in someone's attic, then their story isn't over yet. Subscribe if you want more untold stories like this. Because history isn't finished, it's just waiting to be rediscovered.